Hello everyone, I'm Qi Jing. Today I'm going to talk about our code paper on near optimal algorithms for minimax optimization. This is joint work with Darren Ling and Michael Jordan, both at um, UC Berkeley. Uh, Michael Jordan was my PhD advisor. In order to talk about near optimal algorithms for minimax optimization, let's first uh, talk about a simpler setting, which is just a convex optimization, where the classical problem people talk about is only about minimization. And we assume the function is f is a strongly convex. So we typically make those assumptions where function f is L smooth, and that is like a gradient is L lipschitz, and then function f is new strongly convex. The important quality that governs the complexity of this problem is called the condition number kappa, that is a ratio between L and mu. So a simple algorithm people typically study is called gradient descent, where the next iterator just equal to the current iterator minus the eta, which is a learning rate, times the gradient. And it can be shown this gradient descent is able to find epsilon optimal point, which uh, is epsilon close to the optimal points in this uh, um, kappa log one of epsilon steps. So for simplicity of this talk, I will just uh, denote it as O tilde kappa, which we hide this logarithmic dependence. So we require O tilde gradient evaluations. So one question you may wonder is whether this O tilde kappa is an optimal. So it turns out this is not optimal. And in a convex setting, we actually know there's an algorithm, there's another algorithm which is optimal. That is called Nash of Accelerated Gradient Descent Algorithm, also known as a momentum algorithms. Basically, instead of just doing the gradient descent, it first um, follow the previous uh, direction, which is from xt minus 1 to xt, and overshoot to yt, and then perform a gradient descent at that step. So it turns out this algorithm is able to find the epsilon optimal points in only O tilde square root of kappa gradient evaluations. And because kappa is always greater than 1, so we know this is always going to be faster than gradient descent. And it turns out this square root of kappa is optimal, is a, is a, the number of iterations you need to pay in the worst case. So now we can ask the same question, not only in the minimization problems, but also in the minimax problems. Where, where you essentially you have two players and they're trying to like play against each other. So we typically consider a strongly convex, strongly concave setting, which is a very classical problem, where the standard assumption is uh, f is again L smooth, where gradient is ellipses. And then when you fix y, function f is a convex, from mu x strongly convex function in x. And when you fix x, it's a mu y strongly concave function in y. So now the key quantities becomes two condition numbers. One is kappa x and the other one is kappa y. Those are the ratios between the smoothness and the strongly convex or strongly concave parameters. So another classical algorithm people would use in this scenario is also just direct generalization of gradient descent that is called gradient descent ascent. Basically the minimize, minimizer, uh, the mean, mean player trying to do the gradient descent while the max player trying to do the gradient ascent. So it turns out by running these algorithms, you will find epsilon optimal points now only in O tilde kappa x squared plus kappa y squared gradient evaluations. So this seems to be significantly worse than gradient descent in the minimization problems. So how about other algorithms? It turns out there are two existing algorithms which is faster than gradient descent ascent. One is called actual gradient methods. It's able to find the epsilon large where the epsilon optimal points in O tilde kappa x plus kappa y gradient evaluations. The other algorithm is uh, by a causa et al. And it can do mean of kappa x square root kappa y or square root kappa x times kappa y. So first, you know, like, a, like both two of them, like one is not outperforming the other one in all scenarios. So they kind of like, there are some scenarios one is better than the other one. And however, on the other side, if you look at the lower bounds, giant of proof, we can show for this class of problem, you have to use at least the square root of kappa x times kappa y iterations. And we know the upper bounds and lower bounds differ significantly, especially when kappa x and kappa y are, all, are in different order. Like for example, when kappa x is significantly greater than kappa y, then those two are not matching at all. So this leads us to a very important question what is the optimal race to solve this strongly convex, strongly concave problems, and how to achieve it? So in this 
paper, we actually provide the full answer to this question. We provide an algorithm that can achieve the upper bounds, like it can find the epsilon Nash equilibrium in only square root of kappa x and kappa y iterations, green evaluations. So it matched the lower bounds up to only a polylogarithmic factors. So that's why we call it a near optimal algorithms. Okay. So from this point out, I will try to explain the main intuition, like how we design this algorithm, why our algorithm will provide this uh, near optimal rates. Let's first uh, let's do the first attempt. So first, we look at this minimax problems. We can solve it as a mean problem of the max problem. So what we, I mean is, uh, I can first solve the max over y, which gives us a function that I call phi x. And then we can solve the minimization of phi x. This will give me a Nash, Nash equilibrium. Okay. So in order to do that, we can perform a double loop algorithm. That is, in the outer loop, we do accelerate gradient descent to do minimization. And in the inner loop, we do accelerate gradient ascent to do the maximization. And we just said the maximization is kind of symmetric to the minimization. If we do accelerate gradient algorithms, we only need to pay square root of kappa y iterations to find the, the maximizer of this, uh, of this inner loop. Okay, now for each inner loop, we find the maximization points that give us the phi x. Then we can solve the outer loop that is minimizing over this phi x. We call this gradient, accelerate gradient ascent, descent. But the major problem is uh, when we perform the maximization, the function phi x actually become much worse in terms of smoothness prop prop property. So if, if you look at the smoothness parameters, now it becomes kappa y times l instead of just l alone. Although the strongly convex parameter will remain the same. So if you look, look at the new condition number of this phi function, it will give, a, give you kappa x times kappa y. That's why when you run the accelerate gradient descent algorithms, you require square root of kappa x times square root of kappa y iterations to perform this outer loop. Then if we solve the inner loop to for high, high accuracy, we know the total number of gradient evaluations is basically just the product of the in, number of iteration requires in the inner loop and the number of iteration requires in the outer loop, which gives you a square root of kappa x, but times the kappa y, which is outside the square root in total. Okay. We know this is off by the optimal, that is both kappa x, kappa y inside the square root. And by sy sy symmetric, Symmetry, we can also say the other way. So that's why the AG2, like we run XL gradient in both, uh, in both sides, will achieve the minimizer of those two um, in the gradient evaluations. So now we have a baseline, but it's not uh, optimal, but we have a baseline. So we need to fix uh, this algorithm in order to get the optimal algorithms. So we clearly know the outer loop is kind of like the problem, problem part. Another idea we can fix the outer loop is uh, why not we do the accelerated proximal point algorithms. So the major difference here is that instead of, um, it's uh, similar to accelerated gradient descent, but uh, the second step is no longer gradient descent, but doing a proximal step. So we know if this phi function is a linear function, then this proximal step algorithm, proximal point algorithm, it will become, goes back to accelerated gradient descent. But in general, this is not equivalent. So this proximal point algorithm has a very good property in a sense the number of iterations to solve the minimization of this phi function is only square root of kappa x. However, here kappa x is L over mu, y, mu x. And this L is no longer the smoothness of this phi function, but to the proximal terms you're adding in this um, proximal, proximal steps, so like you, you add this L regularizer. So the very good property is uh, this number of iteration will be always like that, regardless of smoothness phi. Even phi is non-smooth, as long as you're adding this L regularization, L times the L2 re regularization, you will always pay only square root of kappa iterations. However, there's no free lounge. Although the number of iteration is small, but that requires us to solve this proximal steps. That is, a, that requires us to solve this arg mean. We oh, it's only going to be very efficient if we can solve this arc mean efficient. So now we need to look at how we solve this arc mean. So this proximal steps is this minimizer of this phi x uh, and plus l times this uh, like regularizer. 
And we know phi x is a max over y and fx. So which is equivalent to solve this mean max problem of gx that is equal to fxy plus this L times the regularizer on x. Now we go back to the mean max problems. It sounds like we are doing this uh, loopy argument. However, we realize this g function is 3L smooth. It's still mu y is strongly concave, but the most importantly, on x, when you fix y, it's L strongly convex. So if you look at the condition number, on the x side, the condition number now becomes order one instead of kappa x. So that means if we use a like suboptimal algorithm that is both running the XR gradient on both the minimizer side in the inner loop and outer loop, now it only pays square root of kappa y gradient evaluation to solve this problem just because the kappa x equal to one. This gives us a high level composition of our final algorithms basically in the outer loop we run this accelerated proximal point algorithm, while in the inner loop, we run our slow algorithm, but on the proximal problem where the condition number is very good on, on the x side is one. And the product of the, the two complexity is uh, going to give us square kappa x times kappa y in total, which is the near optimal complexity we have. So this concludes that our new algorithm we call the minimax APPA, is going to achieve the near optimal rates, that is the square root of kappa x times kappa y, which match the lower bounds up to only part logarithmic factors. Finally, I also want to mention, um, I, for simplicity in this talk, I only show the strongly convex, strongly concave scenario, but our algorithm is very easily to generalize to other scenario, like in a strongly convex concave setting, where you don't require the other side of to be strongly, or you just do the in a convex concave. We can also extend our algorithm to the non-convex scenario, like in a non-convex strongly concave or non-convex concave setting. And we note in a lot of the scenarios in this table, we mark us first, that is uh, we're, we're achieving the current best complexity, which is better than the best existing ones. And in match, we mean we match the best existing results. And uh, in all the in all the convex concave scenarios, we actually also achieve the optimal rates that match the that match the lower bounds up to the polylogarithmic factors. So this is our is our results. If you're interested, feel free to look at our read our papers and also come to the poster session. Thanks for listening.